In the previous section of the course, we set up a workbook. In this section of the course, we are going to work with data and Excel tables. In this first segment, we will enter and revise data. In this segment, we're going to be using the series underscore start workbook, which I opened earlier and resaved under the name series. Now, on the monthly worksheet, we can select cell B3, grab the fill handle, and drag it down until it covers cells B3 through B7. When we release the left mouse button, Excel repeats the value Fabricam in cells B4 through B7. Now we can click cell C3, hold down the control key, and grab the fill handle until it covers cell C7, and when we do, Excel repeats the value January in cells C4 through C7. Now if we click cell B8 and type the letter F, Excel displays the letters A, B, R, I, K, A, M in reverse video, offering to autocomplete the value Fabricam. To accept that value, we press the tab key, and Excel inserts the value Fabricam into cell B8. Now in cell C8, we can type February. Now we can right-click cell D8, and from the shortcut menu that appears, click Pick from drop-down list. When we do, a list of values above cell D8 in column D appears. Now we can click the value that we want, which is today. When we do, that value appears within cell D8. Now in cell E8, we can type the value 11,802.14 and press tab or return. And now selecting cell B2, we can drag the fill handle to the right until it covers cell E2. When we do, Excel extends the value customer and repeats it in cells C2 through E2. Also, it extends the formatting. If we click the Autofill Options button and click Fill Formatting Only, Excel keeps the original values but applies the formatting from cell B2. In this segment, we entered and revised data. In the next segment, we're going to move data within a workbook. In the previous segment, we entered and revised data in an Excel workbook. In this segment, we are going to move data within a workbook. For the exercise, we are going to use the 2010 Q1 Shipments by Category workbook. Before I started recording, I opened the 2010 Q1 Shipments by Category underscore start sample workbook and saved it under the name that you see now. To start the exercise, on the count worksheet, select cells B2 through D2. Then, on the Home tab, in the Clipboard group, click the Copy button. When you do, Excel copies the contents of cells B2 through D2 to the Clipboard. Then, on the Tab bar, click the Sales tab to display that worksheet. On the Sales Worksheet, select cell B2, and then on the Home tab, in the Clipboard group, click the Paste Buttons arrow, point to the first icon in the Paste group, and then click the Keep Source Formatting icon, which is the final icon in the first row of the Paste Gallery. Excel displays how the data would look if you pasted the copied values without formatting and then paste the header values into cells B2 through D2, retaining the original cell's formatting. Next, we right-click the column header of column I and click Cut. When we do, Excel outlines the column with a marquee. 
we can now right click the header of column E and then under paste options click the paste icon. When we do Excel pastes the column that we cut from column I into column E. In this segment we move data within a workbook. In the next segment we're going to find and replace data within a workbook. In the previous segment, we moved data within a workbook. In this segment, we are going to find and replace data on a worksheet. For this exercise, we need to use the Average Deliveries underscore Start workbook, which is located in the Chapter 2 Practice File folder. I have already opened and saved that file as Average Deliveries. If necessary, click the Time Summary Sheet tab to make sure that we are on the time summary sheet. Then on the home tab in the editing group click find and select and then click find. Then in the find what field type 114 and click find next. When you do, Excel highlights the first cell in which it finds the value 114. Next, we can delete the value in the Find What field by selecting it and pressing the backspace key. And then click the Options button, which expands the Find and Replace dialog box. Now, when we click Format, the Find Format dialog box opens. We click Font to display the font page. And then, in the Font Style list, click Italic. When we click OK, the Find Format dialog box disappears. We can now click Find Next. And Excel highlights cell D25, which contains a value that is formatted in italics. Now when we click close, the find and replace dialog box closes. Now on the tab bar, we click the customer summary sheet tab, which displays the customer summary worksheet. And now on the home tab, in the editing group, we click find and select, and then click replace. When we do, the replace page of the find and replace dialog box appears. Now we click the format arrow to the right of the find what field and click clear find format which clears the format from the find what argument. Now in the find what field we type contoso and in the replace with field we type northwind traders. With everything in place, we click Replace All, and a message box appears indicating that Excel has completed its search and has made three replacements. We click OK to acknowledge that message, and then click Close to close the Find and Replace dialog box. In this segment, we wanted to find and replace values within a worksheet. In the next segment, we are going to correct and expand upon worksheet data. In the previous segment, we found and replaced data within a worksheet. In this segment, we are going to correct and expand upon worksheet data. For this exercise, you need the service levels underscore start workbook, which is located in your Chapter 2 Practice File folder. I've already opened the file and saved it under the new name of Service Levels. On the Review tab, in the Proofing group, we click Spelling, which displays the spelling dialog box. The dialog box displays the first misspelled word 
that Excel found within the worksheet. Verify that the word shipped is highlighted in the suggestions pane and then click change. When you do, Excel replaces the word with the correction and displays the next question word, which is within. Again, we verify that the suggestion is correct and click change. Now Excel displays the next misspelled word, which is today. However, we are assuming, for the purposes of this exercise, that the term today, T-W-O-D-A-Y, is correct because it is the name of a service level. Now we can click Add to Dictionary to add the term today to our dictionary. Now we have three day, which is the same as two day. It is another name of a service level, which is spelled correctly in the context of this exercise. So we click Add to Dictionary again. Excel displays a dialog box indicating the spelling check is complete. Click OK, and it disappears. Now we click cell B6, and then on the Review tab, in the Proofing group, click Thesaurus. Doing so displays the Research Task pane. The Task pane displays a list of synonyms for the word overnight. Now on the Review tab, in the Language group, click Translate. The Research Task pane displays the translation tools. If necessary, in the From list, click English US, and then in the To list, click French, as used in France. After you make those settings, the Research Task pane displays French words that mean overnight. In this segment, we corrected and expanded upon worksheet data. In the next segment, which is the final segment of the Working with Data and Excel Tables section, we will define Excel tables. In the previous segment, we corrected and expanded upon worksheet data. In this segment, which is the last of the section working with data and Excel tables, we will define Excel tables. For this exercise, you will need the drivers sort times underscore start workbook, which is located in your Chapter 2 practice file folder. I have already saved the file under the name driver sort times. To begin, we select cell B2, and then on the Home tab, in the Styles group, click Format as Table, and select a table style. The Format as Table dialog box opens, and we verify that the range equals B2 to C17 appears in the Where is the Data for Your Table field, and that the My Table Has Headers checkbox is selected. And then we click OK. Now in cell B18, type D116, press Tab, and type 100 in cell C18, and press Enter. Excel includes the data in your Excel table. Now we select a cell in the table, and then on the Design Contextual tab, in the Table Style Options group, we select the Total Row checkbox. When we do, a total row appears at the bottom of the Excel table. Now we select cell C19, Click the down arrow that appears at the right edge of the cell, and click Average. Doing so changes the summary operation of the table to Average. On the Design tab, in the Properties group, type the value Sort Times into the Table Name field.
and press enter. Excel renames your Excel table to sort times. Now on the quick access toolbar, click the save button to save your work. In this segment, we created an Excel table. This is the last segment of this section of the course. In the next section of the course, we are going to perform calculations on data.